is not the same warranty car dealers offer. It's better, costs less, and it's customized just for you. You pick your own coverage amount, deductible, and payment plan. You even pick the repair shop, and we pick up the bill, and we'll pay the shop directly. So you don't have to pay up front, then wait to be reimbursed. How much can you save? Plenty. It cost almost $1,300 to repair an air conditioner condenser, but the owner didn't pay a cent. U.S. Fidelis covered it 100%. It cost over $3,700 to replace a transmission, and U.S. Fidelis paid it all. The choice is yours. You can pay your repair bills yourself, or you can let us pay them for you. To find out more, call 1-800-671-3641 for a free five-minute quote. That's 1-800-671-3641. 1-800-671-3641. Call now. Watch my show today at noon on NBC6 HD. 7.30 now on a Thursday morning. It's the 15th day of January, 2009. That is a live look at Hartford, Connecticut. 10 degrees there right now. Going to be colder there tomorrow morning, as it will be in many parts of the east. Even down in the south, it's going to get cold. Wind, well, probably feels like a degree there in Hartford. Probably feels like about five or six degrees here in Rockefeller Plaza. So those are some hearty people, and we thank them for joining us as we sit here all snug as bugs in a rug in Studio 1A. I'm Matt Lauer alongside Meredith Vieira. It's, it's actually, you know, we're talking about the, it's uncomfortable outside. Right. It's dangerous it, for it, a lot of people. It's very dangerous. Just ahead in this half hour, a check of Al's forecast. Plus, we'll fill you in on the hidden hazards of all this cold, including how to keep yourself and your family safe during the bitter blast. Plus, a heartbreaking story that, that sounds almost unbelievable. A baby born two days after her mother died. Her father left to mourn his wife and celebrate a new life all at the same time. We're going to have the tragic details in that story. And then a little later, the Obamas are moving to 1651 Pennsylvania Avenue today, otherwise known as Blair House, right across the street and actually bigger than the White House. We'll take you inside and talk about the decorating changes that the Obamas could make inside the White House. But first, we're learning more about the man arrested in connection with that bizarre plane crash in Florida that's now believed to have been a dangerous hoax. NBC's Michelle Kaczynski has got the latest, or she's in Florida now, with the latest twists and turns. Michelle, good morning to you. Good morning, Matt. For everything police say Marcus Schrenker did to try to get away and everything he might have been trying to get away from, it looks like it was a single email that finally helped police catch up with him and save his life. But as soon as he recovers here, he's already facing felony charges of fraud and federal charges for causing his own plane crash. As if the story of the man police say parachuted out of his own plane, crashed it, hopped a hidden motorcycle, and then tried to end his life didn't have enough twists. Now, troubled investment manager and stunt pilot Marcus Schrenker's wife is accusing him of having an affair. Michelle Schrenker's attorney says she didn't know her husband was under investigation for allegedly bilking clients out of hundreds of thousands of dollars until officers came to their 10,000 square foot Indiana home the day after she had filed for divorce. To Michelle's dismay, at the time her home was being searched, Marcus was in Florida with his girlfriend. He was flying one of his planes to Florida Sunday when authorities say they got a fake distress call. When his turboprop then crashed without him in it, investigators revealed they did find an atlas ready to eat meals, survival gear, a list of campgrounds, and a written list. Cracked windshield, window imploded, bleeding profusely. Exactly what Schrenker had claimed was his emergency. But by the time police found him at this North Florida campsite... He had a self-inflicted what we call a suicide wound on his right wrist that was bleeding pretty bad, looked like he'd been bleeding for some time. There was a large amount of blood on his sleeping bag and inside the tent. The sheriff's office says Schrenker had taken painkillers and aspirin and uttered the word die. Turns out it was an email sent over wireless internet from the campground and tracked by authorities that finally led to Schrenker's capture. The friend says Schrenker wrote, I've been under so much stress. I've embarrassed my family for the last time, and by the time you read this, I will be gone. I cannot bear the magnitude of the pain I have caused Michelle and the kids. Officers caught him just in time, turning what may have been the ultimate backwoods escape into a hospital stay and now federal charges. The Coast Guard says their search alone for Schrenker cost them $38,000. And speaking of monetary amounts, Schrenker's bond is now set at $4 million because the court thought he might be something of a flight risk. 
Matt. Yeah, I think that goes without saying, Michelle. Thank you very much. Dan Abrams is NBC's senior legal analyst. Hi, Dan. Good morning hey, to Matt. you. Take the tabloid stuff yeah. out of this for a second. You've got a sad story of family torn apart. You've got investors who apparently have lost some money, and you've got a guy named Marcus Schrenker who's in some deep legal trouble, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, serious crime here. I mean, when you're talking about the airplane, remember, this is a guy who is now being accused of parachuting out of an airplane and letting that plane fly and crash. That's domestic terrorism. That, remember, that's, that's the charge he's being charged with for willful destruction of an aircraft. The thought is he, he hoped this plane would crash in the Gulf, but maybe it ran out of gas. But again, it could have killed a lot of people that's, on the ground. That's an up to 20 years uh, uh, crime. So that's a very serious crime. He's also been charged in federal court in Florida uh, with the issue of uh, filing a false distress signal. Less serious crime, but that's entirely separate from the fraud charges in Indiana. And, and the investigators are probably going to have a pretty easy time proving that counter to the email he sent his friend, this plane crash was not an accident. Yeah, th look, they'll be able to look at the plane. They'll be able to figure out what sort of um, state the plane is in. They'll be able to go through forensic evidence, etc. But look, it, it sounds like that's the beginning of the defense, right? The defense is going to be, look, I didn't do this on purpose. I was involved in a situation where I had to get out and I tried to get out and I did. That, that same email I'm just, I just referred to, to his friend Tom Britt, I mean, I've read it and I know you've read it. And, and to me, it read like a suicide note. Yeah. But it seems now that was a suicide note designed to cover up an attempt to fake a death. Yeah, I mean, look, that's going to be the allegation. And, and this is what's going to happen is now everyone, if, if this case ever goes to trial, they'll parse through each and every word. I was just talking a minute ago about going through uh, the, the wreckage of the plane. They're also going to go through every word of anything he said. They're going to go through what was happening in his life at the time. What did it mean? How can it be interpreted, et cetera, to figure out what was going on? One of the things that seemed to be going on in his life at the time was that he had had some pretty shady investments investment dealing. So the idea here is he'll face these federal charges in Florida, the plane charges, and then go back and he's got some some other charges to face there in connection with his business. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be, you know, a busy man. Uh, he's going to be in Florida first in court on the federal charges, then uh, potentially going to Indiana on the state charges. So two totally separate sets of charges. here, And he's got some some real big jail time facing him. Oh, yeah. I mean, the possibility here of, of you know, if you put them all together, uh, almost the rest of his life. But, but in particular, particular that the crime with regard to the crashing of the plane is where he's really in trouble. All right, Dan, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Let's get a check of the weather now from Al Roker. Hey, thanks a lot, Matt. We are out here. It's a little blustery and uh, I like the hairstyle, <laughs> but you really need a hat. Uh, I'm from Buffalo. Ah, there you go. This is a, this is a summer, day. summer day in Buffalo. <laughs> I like it. And we got a guy here with his fat flat Stanley for his kid. Yeah, Amanda. And uh, hi, Amanda. Hi, Michael. That, that's that's not flat Stanley talking. That's your dad. Okay. Let's check your weather. See what's going on, and we'll show you. Look at these comparisons: Fairbanks, Alaska, Houston, Texas. Which one's warmer? Bah! They're both 37. Anchorage and Daytona Beach. Which one's warmer? Bah! They're both 41. Who to thunk it? Let's take a look and see what's going on around the rest of the country. Show you for today. We are looking at air stagnation alerts in the Pacific Northwest. Beautiful in Southern California. 83 and sunny in Los Angeles. Some showers down in Southern Texas. Snow showers in the Central Rockies. And again, we've got sunny skies in the Southeast, but really cold temperatures. That's what's going on around the country. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Al, thank you very much. We've got sunny That's clouds here in South Florida, and we'll see some of those clouds moving through to today as we get the cold front coming into the vicinity. It gets in tonight and will drop the temperatures down. A burst of cold air will roll in upper 40s uh, and, and also some 50s overnight tonight. Uh, Friday, it'll still be cool behind the front. We'll only get into the upper 60s to 70s, so the next couple of days, a little bit on the chilly side, grab the jackets. Like today, you want to make sure you check in with the Weather Channel one, two, three, four times a day. And you can do it anytime online on weather.com. Meredith? Al, thank you. The birth of a baby is cause for celebration, but for one family in England, it is bittersweet. She's being called the miracle baby, a girl born two days after her mother died. NBC's Donna Friesen has the story from London. A father's kiss for a very special baby. <laughs> Her name is Aya, Arabic for miracle. Weighing just over two pounds, she was born two days after her mother suffered a fatal brain hemorrhage and was pronounced brain dead. 41-year-old Jane Solomon, a former British skating champion, had longed for a child. Aya was her first. 
Her husband Mahmoud has been left to cope with a tragic mix of joy and sorrow. In the space of 48 hours, he says, I have experienced joy at the birth of my child and endured torment over losing my wonderful wife. Solomon was working as a skating coach on the day she died. Happy, healthy, unaware, an aggressive tumor was growing inside her brain. She said she didn't feel well, she had a headache, so she went home early. Once there, she collapsed and died on arrival at the hospital. Her husband says the doctors told me there was nothing they could do for Jane, but they needed her to stay strong for 48 hours to help our unborn child. Doctors put Aya's mother on life support, kept her body functioning long enough to monitor the baby, administer steroids to help her lungs develop, and then deliver her by cesarean section. Only then did they shut off her mother's life support machine. You can't help but be touched by the, you know, the tragedy of the situation, that this is a mum that's lost her life um, and a baby that won't know her mother. She is tiny but perfect, and friends say will be showered with love. I hope that, you know, Jane's spirit will live on in Aya, and every time that, you know, Jane's husband looks at Aya, he'll realise how wonderful Jane was. For today, Donna Friesen, NBC News, London. And up next, the dangers of the bitter, biting cold, how to protect yourself and your family. That's right after this. We, the people, hereby secede from land and declare ourselves the nation of why not. From this moment on, we will be a nation adrift and set sail free to ask why not. Why not ice skate on the equator, climb mountains at sea, or why not do nothing at all? Become a citizen of our nation, Royal Caribbean, the nation of why not. Wachovia is now part of Wells Fargo. We're now one team that's nationwide and twice as strong. With even more capabilities, more resources, and more solutions planned for the future. So while it's business as usual today, you can look forward to even more great things ahead. Wachovia and Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. A city girl. I know how to light a fire. Where's the switch? And a country guy. Where's something you can get dirty? Are both way out of their element. I'm stuck. Marathon. <gasps> New in town. Rated PG. In theaters January 30th. Progress. It starts with more models than Toyota or Honda with an EPA estimated 30 miles per gallon highway or better. Next, it's a lineup of hybrids that fit the way you live. 